Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I am playing with something called graphite putty. Now it's a putty, it's kneadable, it's moldable, you can move around in your hands, make it whatever shape you want, and it's graphite basically pencil lead. So as I experimented around with this, I found a really fun way to use it. And that was to make rubbings. You know, the kind of thing where you put some texture underneath the paper and then you rub. I usually use something like a crayon to do it, but this was fantastic to give me a quick and easy outline of a stencil. And then I was able to just color it in. Well, here's what it looks like in the plastic bag. It's this wonderful, needable putty that you can play with and shape and do all sorts of things with. But because it's graphite putty and it's designed to, well, be graphite, it can make a mess on your hands. So if you don't want to get a whole bunch of pencil on your fingers, then you want to put on some plastic gloves. Now, I'm going to bring in some plain old copy paper to do this. And I've got a stencil. This one was designed by Mary Nasser for over at Stencil Girl Products. I'm going to open up my package and it has this wonderful Ziploc seal on it kind of thing and you want to make sure that when as soon as you're done with it you seal it right back up because you don't want to lose the moisture that's in it. I'm going to pull off a piece of this again making sure this is closed up. This is one of those products that I really make sure that I close up because I don't want it to dry out and then I can shape it and play with it and do whatever I want with it. Now, give you an idea of what it looks like when it dries out. This is a piece that I left out and it is all dry and so it behaves very much like pencil lead in an oddball shape. But while it's moist, the putty is absolutely moldable, kneadable. You can make it do all sorts of things, but most importantly, you can draw with it. You can write with it. You can make marks with it. You can just have fun playing around with it. But you can see how much of it does get on the fingers. So if you don't want all that on your fingers, you do want to wear some gloves. I'm going to put the stencil down behind the paper. Now this paper, is it fine, elegant paper? No, it's plain old copy paper, cheapo stuff that I would run through my inkjet printer. And I'm going to tape it down in place with some repositionable tape. And that way it'll keep the paper and the stencil in the same spot, even when I'm rubbing this stuff against it. So I'm making kind of a flat putty with this. So it's a flat, I want a flat wide surface. And then I'm just going to gently drag it across the paper. And you can see how it so nicely picks up the image of the stencil. And as you're doing it, the more pressure you use, the darker it is. The lighter pressure, the lighter of the image that you get. You can go over it once, you can go over it twice, completely up to you for whatever makes you happiest as you're making your rubbing here. Now, I haven't used all the putty that was in my hand, and I don't have to. I can put whatever I don't use right back into the bag. But I am going to make sure that I've got it sealed up tightly because air will dry it out. And when it dries out, it becomes stiffer, more brittle, because, well, it's not a putty anymore, it's solid. So I've grabbed a piece that I'd left dried out that I showed you earlier in this video, and you can see how you can get thinner, finer lines with it. And quite frankly, just playing around with this stuff in your fingers is kind of addictive, making marks and scribbling and scratching and doing that kind of stuff. But now back to what the original project was, which was building your own coloring page here. So I've got all these wonderful triangular shapes on here, and I'm gonna use those as a guide as I bring in some colored pencils. These happen to be Prisma colored pencils, but of course you can use any colored pencils that you might have. Now I'm not gonna approach this in a very precise or orderly way because, well, I'm not feeling in a precise or orderly mood and quite frankly, I usually don't feel in that kind of mood. But of course, can you do it that way if you want to? Absolutely. For me, I'm just looking for some loose, free kind of coloring. If I stay within the lines, fine. If I make the lines a little differently than what they are in the graphite there, that's okay too. And when you're doing this, or when I'm doing this, and I'm dragging my hand along that graphite that's on there, I pick up about as much color on the side of my hand as I would be as if I was dragging it across newsprint. So there really isn't very much that shows up there at all. Now with the coloring in here, I am trying to relax, to just unwind, that kind of thing. So I am not planning the colors. I am not overthinking it. I am kind of grabbing whatever comes to mind. I'm putting whatever simple and easy pattern I want to put inside them. And I'm taking a risk here. I'm taking a risk that I might use too much of one color or that the pattern inside one of the triangles doesn't show up the way I'd expect it. Or that there might be a color that I don't use enough, that my colors won't be perfectly balanced on this page. Yes, I'm taking every single one of those risks by not planning this, by simply grabbing the pencils that make me happiest. And I'm also not really trying to make perfectly straight little lines either, because that doesn't make me happy. So you probably already can tell that my lines are a bit wonky. So how can I get away without a plan? How can I get away with taking these risks? I mean, all these colors, do they really all go together? Well, I get away with all that stuff because this is play. 
I am not trying to redo the Sistine Chapel or improve upon what Michelangelo did up there. I'm simply coloring with some colored pencils on a piece of cheapo copy paper. No stress, no pressure. I just get to let myself play and have fun. Now, it wasn't always like this. That whole growing up thing, somehow in the process of doing that, I lost my ability to just let myself be free and play. But the good news is, is I rediscovered it. I figured out how to get that back for myself. And I'm sharing all sorts of the ways that I figured out to help me rediscover play in my Let's Play blog series and also in my free Permission to Play workshop. And you can find both of those things over on my blog at acolorfuljourney.com. Now, as long as I'm not worrying about what I'm doing or what I'm grabbing or that kind of stuff, I get to sort of turn my mind off and let it wander where it wants to go. Now, while it's wandering, sometimes I don't notice some of the details because, well, my mind has wandered off somewhere else, but my hands are still moving. So that means we are ripe for an oops to happen. And an oops is an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. And on something like this, where I'm using colored pencils on copy paper, there isn't going to be any kind of earth shattering oops happening here. What I'm trying to do on this next one when I grab the pink pencil is I'm going to try and trace around the triangle, but I kind of forgot that triangles have three sides and I tried to give it four. But is it the end of the world? Absolutely not. You see, I just put another pencil right over that part and it's no big deal. It absolutely isn't a problem in any way, shape or form. Now, one of the great things about using a stencil to do this is you have a point of reference any time that you want it. So some of my triangles didn't come through as clearly in the rubbing, or it could be the fact that I've been dragging my hand over it that's kind of making it a little bit lighter too. So you can put the stencil back on top of it or have the stencil sitting next to you as a reference so you can easily see where any of the triangles are or any of the shapes that you're using in the stencil, even if your rubbing isn't completely precise or crisp. I'm loving how these look as they're finishing up this page. So this page that I thought was just some who knows what coloring, I think somehow I want to use this in an art journal page. Not exactly sure how yet, but I'm definitely going to be doing that in an upcoming video. So if you hit that subscribe button, you'll know as soon as that video is out, as well as any of my other videos. And if you want to also stay in touch with my newsletter, you can head on over to my blog for that and get signed up. And there are also some free downloadable Sparks of Artspiration videos waiting for you when you get signed up. Well, thanks for joining me for today's play and thank you for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.